Hey everyone, today's video will be about how I changed my mind about my need for a Raspberry Pi cluster. Long story short, I don't need one anymore. Why? Let me explain. But first, if you are new to the channel, my name is László Merca and this channel deals with home automation, home networking and sometimes with related stuff like the air electronics and even a little bit of 3D printing. Anyway, let's continue with today's video. First of all, if you haven't followed my story with building a so-called heart for my smart home, well, it's been an interesting one. So first I started with one big server, a strong uh, Intel machine. Then I realized that it eats up a lot of power. So I decided that I should go with Raspberry Pi or Raspberry Pis because uh, it was uh, a couple of years ago and um, yeah, a single Raspberry Pi couldn't run all the stuff I wanted. So I had two, then I had four, then I had five. And then I just realized that having those separate pies with separate power supplies and separate operating systems, everything manually updated, configured was just too tedious. So I played with the idea of creating a Raspberry Pi cluster that is actually much smaller and has a single power supply and stuff like that. And it was all fine to be honest. And um, I thought to myself, how cool is that? How nerdy is that? Look at all the blinking lights and stuff like that. So I put it in a nice case. Then I added a controller I called, which was a super low powered uh, mini ITX machine and networked all together. So ended up with a single network cable and a single power uh, cord. And it was all fine. So what went wrong with this setup? Turns out clustering stuff is not easy. And yeah, the plot twist is I'm a backend developer by trade and I specialize in cloud, specialize in uh, networking stuff. So I should have known this, but uh, doing something in the cloud, writing applications that are running in the cloud, running on clusters is pretty different from trying to clusterize software that was never meant to be running in cluster. So for example, let's take a look at Home Assistant. Everything is encapsulated. It's a nice piece of software. I love Home Assistant. But uh, have you ever played with the idea of running multiple instances where they just uh, share data and uh, do stuff in parallel? Like how would you organize MQTT? How would you organize your um, automations? Not easy. And now, just imagine that you are trying to do this with different machines. So multiple Raspberry Pis running multiple instances of Home Assistant. Yeah. So at some point I ended up with a semi-clusterized solution like having multiple instances of the MQTT broker running behind the proxy or load balancer. And I experimented a lot, but eventually given up. So I just decided that I will use the Raspberry Pi cluster as uh, like a set of Docker hosts uh, where I can just use uh, micro Kubernetes or, or stuff like that or, or multiple instances of port in a agent to move to host everything in containers and move around when needed. And eventually it turned into a never ending game of resource optimization. So whenever I uh, tried uh, out something new, I realized that, okay, this Raspberry Pi is running low on resources, so I will just replace uh, some containers and move some others to another Raspberry Pi. Then uh, eventually this just became a mess, to be honest. So I started to look around, what should I do? And then I realized something on the PC market AMD and Intel is doing this crazy race for releasing newer and newer processors. And because of that, at least where I live, but I assume this happens everywhere, people started to sell old CPUs like crazy. So, uh, sixth or seventh generation Intel processors are like going for dirt cheap. And they try to sell it because they are afraid that they, they will miss out on the newer processors. And now with uh, uh, GPU prices sky high, people try to compensate with processors. And yeah, here we go. The market is flooded with second-hand cheap CPUs. And then I remember that uh, I used to have uh, um, 
Skylake, which uh, had this super low power cons consumption in idle. And to be honest, when you are running home automation and when you are running a home lab and you are not working with it, uh, chances are your processor spends a lot of time in idle. For the sake of comparison, I created uh, three different setups. First one is a Raspberry Pi cluster based on four Raspberry Pi 4B models with uh, four gigabyte RAM each. The second one is pretty much the compute module based version of this one. So once again, four Raspberry Pis with uh, four gigs of RAM, this time with uh, compute modules. And the last one is a Skylake 6700 uh, based uh, server that you can create from, uh, well, second hand parts. So I compared the prices and uh, yeah, all prices are in USD and uh, second hand parts. I just looked those up on eBay and uh, for the Raspberry Pi parts, I used uh, official reseller prices. So as you can see at this point, having server that is based on the second hand parts and uh, based on uh, the trusty old uh, sixth generation Intel processor and the matching motherboard uh, is uh, pretty much the cheapest solution, especially if you live in the US. But uh, the compute module based solution, well, I couldn't really find a simple go to solution here. So when I, I talk about motherboard in case of a compute module based uh, cluster, it is obviously a carrier board that enables you to install for Raspberry Pi uh, compute modules. Right now, there's no such uh, board on the market that is popular, that is, that is uh, tested, that is, let's say, loved by the community or something like that. So there's no, uh, there's nothing like a, a default go-to solution here. Actually, there are different uh, prototypes and, uh, well, take a look around and you will see. Okay, back to our topic. Uh, in case of the Raspberry Pis, obviously the additional cost is uh, the networking because uh, for optimal performance, you really don't want to have uh, all those modules running on Wi-Fi uh, close to each other. And uh, instead you want to wire them together via Ethernet. In case of a compute module based system, you don't need that because the carrier board uh, takes uh, care of uh, communication but uh, with uh, the uh, normal Raspberry Pis, you need an extra uh, Ethernet switch. In case of a Skylake, of course, you don't need one because you have a single board. Power supply is also um, an interesting topic. It is the part that I trust the least when it comes to second hand. So instead I calculated with brand new prices. Uh, this is actually good because well, you cannot really find, uh, or at least I couldn't find, uh, second-hand uh, power supplies for Raspberry Pis. So I just used the reseller price of the official Raspberry Pi 4 power supply that comes with that uh, USB-C connector. For the Skylake server, I used an average price of uh, uh, lower wattage uh, FSP. Uh, power supply. FSP is my go-to brand uh, when it comes to power supplies. I've been using their power supplies for, I don't know, a decade now and I never had problems. Okay, before proceeding, I must note something because I know that every time I say server, there's someone out there who wants to crucify me because uh, server means ECC RAM and stuff like that. But uh, think about it, we're talking about Raspberry Pis and uh, desktop grade hardware used as a home server. So yeah, we are obviously in hobbyist territory and not in a professional environment. Okay, with that in mind, let's continue with power usage and stuff like that. If you watched my previous videos about uh, using this Raspberry Pi cluster extended with the controller unit and whatnot, as a uh, heart of the smart home, uh, you might remember this. So it pulled around 55-ish watts from the wall and uh, this was under average load. So it's not that low to be honest. 
but mind you this uh, included the SSD storage the case with the cooling fans and the network card that connected all the pies to the controller unit now in the same case with the same cooler and uh, yeah same power supply the current hardware the Skylake based uh, server pulls around 28 watts so it's quite an improvement And finally, it's time to talk about software. So since obviously you cannot uh, compare a set of Raspberry Pis against a server based on a totally different architecture, I would rather uh, compare the two systems as a whole. So in case of that cluster on the controller, I've been running Proxmox and uh, it had a set of VMs like uh, having IP Fire and uh, having a VM called Controller that was um, running the MQTT broker and other uh, small footprint uh, stuff, basically Docker containers. Now in the new system, I basically did the same. To be honest, I just swapped the SSDs. So instead uh, of uh, reinventing the wheel here, I just took the SSD from the original system, uh, put it into this new Skylake based one and migrated all the stuff from the Raspberry Pis, the cluster, and to the same machine and um, also added some extras but more on that later so now it has home assistant which was uh, dedicated which had a dedicated raspberry pi uh, it has pi hole uh, some uh, smaller uh, items like test mode mean uh, have been moved from the one of the raspberry pies which acted as a docker host to the controller as well so this is what i had now on a single machine. I also added a small media server and uh, some uh, ZFS based storage. So here we go. And uh, as you can see, I'm only using a fragment of the CPU time. So I have plenty of resources free here. The most concerning part is the memory, which, uh, well, as you can see, like 80% plus uh, utilized, which is, uh, well, I wouldn't call it catastrophic, but not too good either. Uh, I can optimize the resources here, to be honest. So I just started experimenting with uh, Linux containers or uh, LX, LXC containers for short. First, the media server was running as a separate VM. Then I just realized that it eats up too much resources and uh, started to look around for alternatives and found out about uh, LXC containers. Uh, think about these containers as a halfway between a VM and the Docker container. So it, it, uh, it's beefier as a Docker container because uh, you can install an operating system on it and uh, you can run package installations and, and different processes and whatnot, but it does not offer a full uh, virtual hardware stack and whatnot as a true VM. So actually those are like super lightweight VMs. And uh, as you can see, this is uh, the media server. I assigned two CPU cores from the total of eight to, uh, to this one. And it's more than enough. Although I must note that uh, right now this is uh, idling during, uh, uh, let's say hardware transcoding of, an, of full HD. Uh, video it, it's like I think 15%-ish so it's not that bad and still doesn't utilize uh, too much of the overall resources of the whole host so probably by optimizing uh, stuff like uh, converting the controller VM into an Alexi uh, container and uh, Stuff like that, I can probably work my way down under 10 gigs or even to 8 gigs. Unfortunately, Home Assistant has its predefined VM, so I cannot really um, do much about that. But anyway, all in all, this looks very good. So, uh, based on this, the question arises. Um, what will I do with the Raspberry Pi uh, cluster? 
And uh, yeah, I still have a lot of different uses for nodes in my mind. So probably future projects, experiments and stuff like that. Raspberry Pis are still super useful. So I'm not planning to sell them or throwing them away or something like that. They just not the way that I want to run the, the center part of my smart home. At least not in the foreseeable future, but who knows. It's always something new to learn, so I'm not saying never again. So yeah, that's it. It's time to close this video. And let me do that with a question. So what are you using to run Home Assistant or other self-hosted services? I'm pretty curious about what other people use, because what I've just described works pretty flawlessly for me and it's super convenient and uh, yeah, doesn't eat up a lot of power. So use the comment section and while you're at it, if you're not uh, subscribed to the channel yet, please consider subscribing. I do my best to upload a new video every week. And yeah, I hope to see you next time, next week, with another video. Bye.